know Bobby or Dave before this all came Never. Out. Never met them. Never met them. Even know their names? Uh, not not till kind of it got started, to be honest with you. No. Never. Really? never. Yeah, and along those lines, I mean, if you guys were in the championship team, when did it start? I mean, I assume... It's, it's, you know, I mean, basically, it was the next day or two when it kind of started. So it, it's been a whirlwind for me because, you know, I mean, coming off the emotions of carrying an undefeated season all the way to the championship game and been there 22 years and like you're sitting there like will we ever get this chance again you know yeah. like and like you're you're playing you know to be immortal basically right and uh but you know getting back when we got back to Spokane the next day I think things started happening like the day after that and it was just like I took a breath and and they, they said there was real interest there not just you know fleeting and I said, uh, talked to my wife, and we talked to our kids, and I decided to go for it. There never was like an ever off another offer, because I never let it get to that yeah. point. And, um, you know, I mean, yeah, I, honestly, I was totally content staying at Gonzaga. Now, when this opportunity started to present itself, you know, I took a step back, looked at the success we'd had at Gonzaga, how far we've taken the program, looked at my age and the experience that I had, looked at the age of my kids, and I was like, this is the right time, and it's the right place, and hopefully I'm the right guy for it. There's so many positives here. I, I see so many similarities between Gonzaga and Arizona. You know, of course there are differences, but for me, it's a, it was an easy decision to make. Similarities how so? Um, fan bases, passion, you know. Um, just, you know, it's the biggest show in town, you know, and. Uh, and, and, and those are the main ones, you know, and just, it's just people are invested emotionally, you know, financially, you know, and, um, and, and, and to me that that's, you know, one of the most important things. I remember, you know, Coach Few used to always talk about, you know, you know, when he was young and having success at Gonzaga, you know, first starting, um, you know, we had these coaches versus cancer events, you know, Coach Olson would come, and Jim Bayheim would come, and, and um, Coach Bayheim came and told Fuey, you know, you guys, probably know him a little bit right now. You can imagine his delivery, but he was like, don't ever leave this place. Hmm. It's special. Yeah. And then you can tell the quality of a job of one thing, their fan base. And he saw that we had it there, you know, so, and everybody was invested. So, you know. Coach Bayham told you that or told Told, you? told Fuey that oh, about okay. Gonzaga. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm coming up to this thing. I'm hearing all these things, right? And, and I've been, Come on, I remember when we played you guys, whatever year was it, 14 in San Diego, and you guys got us really good in that NCAA tournament game. Um, just walking on the streets and everybody was from Arizona, you know what I mean? And Gonzaga travels too, mm -hmm. but it was just like, it, it was just a different level. And, and, and I've always respected that. And, and, you know, I want to embrace it. You're never gonna hear me complain about it. Yeah. But I am going a little bit blind, right? right. Where I don't know, we, we can all say, maybe they'll do this, maybe they won't do that. We don't know is nobody's been down this path before. So my job is this, lead the program moving forward. That's all I'm thinking about. And, and deal, with this, deal with the issues that come with it. And, and I understand it's part and parcel. You know, and, um, and, and let's be honest, if those issues weren't hanging over the program, we wouldn't be sitting here talking right now. You know what I mean? Sean would be the head coach and he'd be killing it. So. I understand that and I embrace it and I'm gonna do the best job I can shepherding the program through it. Miller, he would never stay at home. Like, yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. You had to come practice, no come question. I mean, door, right? hey, our programs have had a great synergy yeah. and, and us competing against each other has always been a, out of respect. Yeah. It hasn't been over one trying to, you know, there's been no bitterness or, you know, like that. So, no, I mean, I mean, we've always, respected and looked up to Arizona basketball and you know and I'm, I'm genuine with that I look forward to the day Sean and I can connect you know what I mean I'm listen I, I think this guy's gonna have some real nuggets of wisdom for me you know and, and I don't want to downplay that you know I'm not trying to separate myself from that yeah was there anything specifically you got out of the talking to them today on that zoom or whatever you had with it that you got out of that or heard well, from them over and over kind of thing? I don't know I just I got emotional there and you know what I mean because I was telling them you know I think one of my most special moments in coaching was, um, you know, 
2017, we made the Final Four in Phoenix, played the championship game. Right. Phoenix, um, right. So, the night before, I think, our Final Four game, you know, we uh, we brought, brought, you know, we were doing a team film session at night, you know what I mean, bringing some of the guys to bed, and, and what we did is we brought all the former players that were at the Final Four, you know, I'm gonna get emotional, but you know, I mean, what it means to get there, right? I mean, like, when you break through, and you know we were fighting that fight the little guy and here we are and you know whatever you legitimize it however you want to put it here at the final four all those foreign players brought him in, and brought him in our film room you know uh, after the team was sat down we surprised our team and our team got up and gave those guys a standing ovation you know what i mean it was like wow i mean so i know what that means and obviously you can see it moves me i want to do that for the guys here I mean, we have former players at Gonzaga. I know how those guys talk, and, and, it, and the same thing would have happened there. Yeah. Um, you know, I went and did my best job, and they chose me. And, and, and once they chose me, I, I'm, I'm, whether they realize it or not, I'm one of them. And, and I want to do everything I can to serve those guys, because listen, I, I do get emotional almost thinking about those former players watching games from home, being emotionally invested, you know, I mean, how cool is that when you're, you know, I know what it means to the former guys. Your guys that go play in the NBA, when they're done, they don't they don't watch a Milwaukee Bucks game if they played for the Bucks and are living and dying and everything. But their college team, that's a big deal. And so I know that. And and, and I want I want to bring those guys joy. 99, 2000, 2000, 2000, two years, you know, I was I was whatever you but you were, I, I started going to I started going to grad school, but they had no money to give grad assistance. And then I was just like, you know what? I don't really want a master in sports management. I was just using it as a, a way to be in it. And so I just stopped doing that and became like a volunteer assistant, you know. So how did you pay the bills? You... My wife worked at Macy's. We made less than a thousand bucks a month. And you know what? Those were the best days. Yeah. We had all the, we have amazing memories from those days and, and friendships and, and stuff so you know and then one thing turned into another and then the, the guy that I was kind of working hand in hand the guy named Scott Snyder decided he didn't want to coach he was the third assistant and then uh, I remember Feely called me in and the job interview was hey you don't seem like you're very organized but you're great socially you need to work on getting more organized and you're hired that was the job interview so yeah and that's literally I mean, my wife was telling me, uh, I don't know the dates and everything, but it was like April 9th, or her birthday is April 11th. So it was right around her birthday, like the 10th or 11th, when I got offered the job, you know, 20 years ago. I mean, of course, I mean, I asked my ideas recruiting-wise, uh, directions I think I want to go, you know, and, and I want to be honest with those guys and what they are, and, and I want to hear from them, you know, and listen, you, I don't think you can ever downplay, like, if a kid tells you, like me, Arizona was the one place for me. I think there's merit in that. And I want if that's the case, I want to hear it. I mean, I think as of right now, there's like roughly 12 guys lined up, but obviously there'll be changes. Do you anticipate even now maybe adding another guy or two that you kind of I mean, with, you know, already in the spring? I'm ready to react yeah. to what happens. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm ready to react to what happens. And, uh, and, 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 and I've re literally tried to come in here with an open mind in respect to everybody because I know these situations are hard for all parties involved. The staff that's leaving, you know, the staff that's coming, their families are moving, the current players that are here. I mean, it's just a lot of moving pieces and I want to, you know, be respectful of that. When you met with them, was it everybody, just a handful of guys? No, no, every, everybody was there that's here. Okay. So, uh, yeah, no, it was good. I mean, the guys are great and obviously I've got to work to earn their trust, you know, and, and, and get to know those guys. So, um, yeah, I mean, they've all seemed to be, you know, receiving the news well. Um, and, and I told them we're going to have individual meetings in the next day or so. And their job is to ask me questions. And if they don't ask me questions, that tells me that they're not body. You know, because I want guys that are, you know, that are owners and invested, you know. And, and so to me, you know, coming in and, and asking me questions is important. 
one and I'll ask them questions and we'll go back and forth, but I definitely want it to be a, a back and forth. Cool. Did it scare you at all taking your first head coaching job at a program like Arizona where the, the expectation is Final Four? No, because that's the only reason I'm taking it. Because I'm not scared of expectations. I mean, I'm at a program that's, that has been a powerhouse and is going to continue to be a powerhouse. And, and um, for me, that's important. I'm not, I'm not looking to take multiple steps. I left Gonzaga, and my next step is where I want to end up. I'm not, a, obviously, 22 years, I'm not a mover and a shaker. And you know what? Maybe I was able to skip a few steps, um, but here I am, and I'm ready to roll. What would you say to the people who go away as my head coaching experience? I would say the last 22 years, if they knew the amount of time I put in preparing myself for this, you know, they would welcome it.